Welcome to the ninth video on presentation and writing tips. In this video I will uh, focus again on the discussion section, or the discussion chapter. And I will talk in this video especially on the ethical and societal issues that you can bring up in the discussion chapter. As before, you're free to use this material and it's part of a course that is now coming to its end. So, why should you bother about ethical and societal aspects of your work? Well, they have to do with the zooming out, uh, which is part of the importance of the work. And that is something that uh, you deal with maybe in a separate paragraph in the discussion uh, um, chapter, but perhaps even under, under a separate subheading, so that you have a sort of uh, su subchapter called ethical and societal aspects of your work. Uh, and this latter choice to have it under a separate subheading might be important uh, or might be a good option because of its importance for evaluating our educational programs. Uh, and why is this important? Well, it's because right now, here in Sweden at least, uh, the final thesis reports are the sort of key thing in evaluating the entire educational programs. Uh, this might not be the same in all countries, but in Sweden that is the case. So, and, and, and part of the uh, things uh, that are checked uh, or ethical and societal aspects of your work. Have you understood these issues? So if we get more specific and if we move here for maybe one minute to Swedish, uh, we look at something called Högskoleförordningen, which is the description of what should be included in, a, in an educational program. And then to have a bachelor's degree, the student should uh, be able to do evaluations with relevance uh, to uh, scientific, societal, and ethical aspects of the work. So you should be able to do assessments of all these things in order to uh, get this degree. Uh, and you should also show knowledge about um, or insight about uh, the role of this knowledge in society and about our responsibility for how it is uh, for how it is used. Yes, and also to identify needs of the further knowledge to, uh, to, to develop your own confidence. But, but these things are things that they will check. They have separate points for this and, uh, and therefore it's, uh, it's really good that it's clear in the report where to find that because then they will simply very early on see that they wrote something about that and then they would go and see that it's somehow reasonable and then they will just tick off that box. So, so therefore it's, it's really important uh, to, to have this clear in the report. So, uh, now here it will depend on the project, of course, of what to write, uh, and I will also not tell you what the conclusion should be, but I want to uh, get your ideas flowing so that you sort of realize things that you can talk about. And, uh, of course, as we said already in the background uh, section, uh, we have... Um, we have already talked about how to zoom in from something important. So already there we have uh, talked about this. That uh, we, we typically in a systems biology project, systems medicine project, have some disease which is important. Uh, but uh, you may also want to revisit these points here in the discussion section or paragraph that deals with the societal impact. And in the discussion section, you can actually zoom out even more and talk about how this leads on to the future and uh, uh, how this is a sort of a stepping stone towards, uh, towards other things. And then you might want to use formulations like um, doctors are now drowning in data and uh, they need new tools. And um, the same with drug companies, they are crumbling and they are... They are. Uh, they need a more systematic approach to to survive. Basically, I don't know how much you know about this, but but drug companies are uh, to a large extent uh, trial and error based. Um, so it can be much more systematic. 
and here systems biology can uh, can uh, come in and change this. So you can say this in general, and then you can say that this uh, specific project illustrates how this uh, can happen. So it's a sort of a, it's a stepping stone to developing key components of tomorrow's healthcare systems. So these are just formulations that you can use, and you should use your own ones. But uh, but uh, but uh, in general, you can zoom out uh, maybe even more to the future than than you did in the discussion. So let's uh, also think a little bit about ethical issues. What can you say here? So uh, if you have experimental data, you always have ethical uh, issues. Uh, so there is always some inconvenience, uh, either in terms of privacy or in terms of uh, doing something that is simply uncomfortable or might maybe even dangerous to in collecting the data. And therefore, you, you usually have to apply for an ethical permit. So find out how this was done and if they have it, and uh, and, uh, and just say some things about this. This, this is a good idea. Uh, and uh, maybe you should also point out if this is a really invasive um, invasive thing. And also, when we use the data for modeling, that that may also, in principle, be an additional invasive uh, aspect compared to the original permit. So you can talk about this. Uh, so uh, is, it, uh, is it more invasive to spread it to other purposes than maybe was the original uh, reason for doing the experiment? Same for test animals. Uh, if you are uh, using them, was it worth it? If you kill them, was it worth it? Uh, and. Um, here, regarding test animals, I should say that, especially for a systems biology project, you have some strong talking points uh, in terms of ethical issues, because modeling can actually be used to replace the need for test animals to a large extent. So let's have a look at an example of this. The Dalaman model and the FDA, Food and Drug Administration, in, in the US. So the Dalaman model was developed for type 1 diabetes, and it was based on unusually high quality data. Uh, and because of these high quality data uh, and the associated mathematical modeling, uh, it could be, the model could be accepted by the FDA uh, as a possible replacement for test animals when certifying certain insulin treatments. So, so this basically means that a step that used to take four to six years cost uh, one billion kroner or 1,000 million kroner and involved thousands of test animals. Now, cost less than one million kroner and uh, only takes a few months and no usage of test animals. So it's a major improvement also in terms of uh, ethical issues. But also this timing is really important because the time that it takes uh, to develop a drug after you have put a patent on it uh, limits how much money you can make from that drug. So if you want to say something about this, then, uh, then this is... Uh, um, this is a reference that you might want to use. Uh, here I could also point out that, uh, that we have actually ourselves um, built onto this Dalaman model to be able to do the same thing for type 2 diabetes. And this involves the development of a multi-level model. So this is more or less the original Dalaman model for the whole body interactions. And they measure these fluxes. And what we have done now is to adopt this to type 2 diabetes and include intracellular methods. Was a side note. So now uh, let's just say some more things on uh, on um, uh, test animals and how to reduce them. So if you want to say things about this, you should check up the Helsinki Declaration in its various its various versions. And um, there is something called the three R's, and these three R's uh, have to do with animal uh, test animal usage. That you, uh, the first R is to replace, second is to reduce, and the third is to refine animal use. And um, modeling can actually be used for all of these three things. It can replace, as we saw for the Dalaman model, and if you uh, can replace, uh, you, you, if you can't replace completely, you can reduce, and in any case, you can be smarter. So you can uh, make use of, more of each experiment in a better way. And there are also uh, 
research foundations that give money especially to this and they of course also have uh, lots of things that you can check out here. So uh, let's end with some open questions as before uh, and we will take up these uh, things when we meet physically. So uh, if you uh, are doing a citrus biology project where you do include animals. Is this okay? Um, despite its potential uh, for reducing test animal usage. And here you may have different viewpoints and you might uh, want to argue for this, um, but uh, just to highlight them. So for one viewpoint might be that, no, it's not okay. Uh, because a mathematical model uh, is just as an animal model there to uh, approximate the human situation and to do a model for a model so to do a model for a mouse which is a model for the human is weird it should only be done on humans this is one viewpoint you, you may have uh, another is that it can still be important to do modeling on test animals as a subset uh, because it might increase our ability to translate from animals to the other faster and uh, uh, a third one is that, uh, uh, well, yeah, it's, it's okay. If the data already exists, why not? And the final uh, viewpoint that I highlight here uh, is that modeling is primarily useful to uh, get a clearer picture of how systems actually works. Uh, and that this whole point of replacing test animals, it's not really there in reality. So we shouldn't think too much about that. Because if you do this, uh, um, modeling based on existing data that usually leads to more experiments. So, um, so this is actually not uh, a strong point that's sometimes made out to be. So, um, also think about more generally until you meet. Um, what are the main ethical issues with your project, and what are the potentials in terms of ethical issues, both on the short term and on the long term? And the same thing for the society. What are the short-term uh, benefits and potential problems? Uh, and the same for long-term uh, uh, of your project. So think about these things. And um, in general, I hope that you now have some food for thought to uh, say some things about these um, aspects in your discussion.